Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul and today I'm about 90% done with the greenhouse. I've been attaching to the side of my um, detached garage. Uh, if you haven't been following, I got some recycled windows from a buddy and uh, that just one thing led to another and all of a sudden I was putting this thing together and I'm thinking, you know what? It's the perfect opportunity to accept Scott Winard's $50 challenge, $50 bonsai challenge. So I have way too many trees, indoor trees, indoor plants, outdoor trees, full size, in pots, you name it. We got the five acres here on the ranch. And I was thinking, you know what, what, what could I do um, to repurpose or use $50 in a smarter way for my trees and just think a little outside the box on the $50 challenge. So what I did was I put together a little uh, cold house greenhouse for the winter that I'll be able to maintain at freezing level for things like my agapanthus, my maples, um, uh, birch trees, zelkovas, all sorts of things that I used to put down in the basement. And the, the whole reason for that is A, when they were small pots and little seedlings, it was difficult to go up and down the stairs a million times just bringing the pots down for the season and then back up but additionally um, it was difficult to get water down there so with this year i had picked up four of these ginormous lily of the nile agapanthus and they're all over the property and i just kept thinking oh my gosh come winter because they have to stay at or above freezing this is gonna be a nightmare. So I said, let's seize the day. Let's put in a little greenhouse that we could put all of your trees that typically um, they go dormant in the basement and you keep, I keep them, you know, in the 40s and they do fine down there, but I think that they're, they're grown up enough working on year five uh, from seed that even in pots at really cold conditions in the greenhouse, I could maintain that like at, at freezing or a little bit above to uh, do that dormancy but not worry about harming the roots so yeah so i've got a little bit of an update on that we are pretty much done like the the look of it is how it's going to be so yes agapanthus those two are going to stay out my evergreens will stay out but you know the less cold hardy my japanese maples you don't want to lose those but I figured I'd give y'all a glimpse of the front yard with these two sugar maples, little baby A and big mama B. I wave to everybody going by and they're usually work crews and they're like, why is this guy waving at us? <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's go check out that greenhouse. That's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, y'all, so talking about the $50 bonsai challenge, my broski Scott Winard challenged me to that about a month, maybe two months ago, um, and I know I took a different approach, uh, but I really feel like building that outdoor, like cold house, greenhouse type of deal, depending on the season, it's really going to benefit all of my bonsai, and to be honest with you, I really don't need any more, so... Uh, I feel like it was a $50 very well spent. I'm excited that I was able to create that for only $50 considering that like the minimum small greenhouse right now I could find is like $1,500 and you still have to put it together. <laughs> so anyways, uh, with the $50 bonsai challenge you are supposed to challenge three new people. So of course, my consigliere Ian at Back Garden Bonsai. Um, I know he's not going to want to do this one. However, Ian, I thought outside the box and whatever, man, just do it. Give in to peer pressure. And my homie Colin at Boston Bonsai Idiot, you are now challenged as well, my friend. And although not strictly a bonsai guy, the chef at um, Todd's Tropicals, uh, Tropicals also has some awesome frankincense and myrrh trees, uh, bullhorn acacia. He's got some really cool uh, 
like tropical bonsais because he lives down in Florida. And my friend, you have been challenged, the $50 bonsai challenge. So there's rank three. We got Todd, Colin, Ian. That's what's up, y'all. So I'm going to go spend the next three hours of my life reading books to Stella because she's getting them all out. <laughs> so uh, take care, y'all. Cheers. So here is the new tree truck. We actually, my wife found this second hand online from another tree farm, a more established. So I think they're getting ready to retire. And it was only 10 bucks. And see how it's got the recess round, so it'll be great for pots. I won't have to modify the bottom at all. That'll really help with moving all of the really heavy pots to this area. And so I could just lift them in through this door and set them up for winter. So yeah. Actually, for one time in my life, going smarter and not harder. All right, so working our way up the driveway. See, I've got that little causeway coming off of the deck. And then that's the lean down to the chicken coop in the backyard and all that. And so when I got these windows, I really didn't know where I was going to put it because my property looks flat, but that's all up front. And I didn't want a greenhouse in the front. In the back, it's like consistently sloping downward and like lots of bumps and such like that so after measuring i figured you know what i could really utilize a greenhouse off the side of the garage with what i have and then we'll carry the length of the garage if i have the garage as one side so this way is eastern western so we just get Sun coming up overhead like that. So a nice spot to have it. Wind protection between house and garage. And then there's still enough room to come off the steps and walk down, take care of the chickens and go in the backyard and such. So I framed it out. If you want to see a bear framed, you can go back a couple of videos on this one. Um, but if you have seen it, then you know that I've been working on for a little bit. So I left these two front window panes open and right in there, center mass. I've got the temperature gauge. I might hang a couple more, um, but I wanted to get the initial one. And I feel like the inner door towards the garage um, out of direct light and, you know, not also on an outer facing window that could have gotten a lot of wind over the night. So it would tell me it was lower than it was figured that's a good accurate reading but I'm gonna hang a couple more so that I have three different readings probably one that side and then I don't know one middle maybe yeah so these two panes are the only ones left open gotta paint these but I put this poly tarp up there it's six mil uh, millimeters thick and I use these little nails with the rubber guard and the spacer washer thing there so that it won't rip off. Originally, I was going to use staples, but any type of wind would really start ripping at that. So even if I have to replace this top once a season, it was only $36. $36 for the tarp. And these nails were $6. So with that, we were at 42 and the screws were at 799. So that brought us up to 49.99. I didn't pay for the windows and everything seems secure. So these are all temporary. You could just back them out with a hammer and then reattach. So I thought maybe um, in the summer and spring seasons, I would roll this up and then uh, do some germination and things with fruits and vegetable plants because it'll get nice and warm in there. But for now, it's gonna be a little cold house, maintaining above 32, making sure it doesn't get too hot. And if it does, I'll open up the garage and that back door and uh, whatever and if it gets extremely cold I could throw a little space heater in there because I have electricity with the garage and boom boom so 
so I'm actually pretty happy with it. We're, like I said, 90% done. Just got done doing the waterproof taping. Not everything was laying flat, so I had to make some cuts with a box cutter, but it's all working out, so I'm pretty psyched about that. All right, let's take a look here. Boom, boom, still keeping the garbage and recycle in the garage because of the bear. All right, so with this, I've got the garage door that can be closed. And then without having like extreme Arctic winds this winter, if we have extreme colds, I have a double door. So boom, boom, garage door, then this door, that's a double door. Got the thermometer there. And then we enter here. Now a lot of these windows, like this one I left this um, screen in, they can scroll open and give little cracks for airflow and all that throughout the year. But for winter, the key was sealing it up, getting it um, thermally set up, keeping it away from the, you know, the conditions, icy rains, terrible blizzards. So if it starts to build up, I made it a nice steep roof. I'll just come in here, knock it down or off, and then go along the outside with a broom. And, you know, I'm not going anywhere for a long period of time, so I don't really have to worry about it collapsing in. So I'm just going to line them up. I'll probably leave enough room for me to walk from the outside to keep them closer to the garage. I feel like that's more temperature controlled. And then I'll just fill in around them with uh, this bark mulch that I have. So, plan to have a plan that's actually coming together. <laughs> I'm sure a few of you, including myself out there, like along the way here, was like, uh, this guy's not gonna be able to pull this out. He's not gonna be able to pull this together. And uh, yeah, I agreed. But, it's starting to work out so um, we have a few more weeks of unseasonably warm weather <clears throat> we're looking at 60s and 50s highs and lows next week which is glorious and so I'm not moving anything in there just yet but it's nice to have everything taken care of I had told my broski Ian at back garden bonsai that I would have it done for October 1st and I, I'm 27 days late however the weather, Mother Nature, actually helped me out, so, yeah. All right, so another thing I got going on down here, just cleaning up the raised tree bed. So I came down with the loppers today, turned down these ginormous, you're looking at them like they're trees, but those are weeds. And then I just have to pull out those little crawlies I'd like to have it done by tomorrow, just because we're having a few people over. But as you see, the cuttings and Yamadori's have done very well. So, productive year for us, y'all. Anyways, I hope you have had a productive year and you're uh, starting to get outside more, getting more freedom, not having to wear masks and all these huge restrictions and just enjoying life. If you're just getting into Bonsai, I am very happy to help you out um, with any questions or concerns you may have. I'm not the best, but I've been in it for five years and very active. So if there's been a mistake possible, I have made it. So uh, anyways, I'm Jared Paul, and from my family to yours, cheers.